All right, today we're gonna to be looking at the uh, floating ax head that Elisha caused to float. Uh, this is in 2 Kings 6, one through seven. And this has a lot of similarities to the bitter waters of Mara when Moses cut down a tree and uh, threw it in the water and uh, the waters were healed. And these are connected. These stories are similar. And uh, we will just get into the story. I'll just dissect, uh, it's only seven verses. Um, and we'll just dissect this and see what this is really about, okay? Second Kings 6, 1 through 7, it says, Now the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See, the place where we dwell under your charge is too many for us. So let us go to the Jordan, and it, let each of us get a log, and let us make a place for us to dwell there. And he answered, said, Go. Then one of them said, Be pleased to go with your servant. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was felling a log, his axe head fell into the water, and he cried out, Alas, master, it is borrowed. And then the man said, Where did it fall? When he showed him the place, he cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. And he said, Take it up. So he reached out and took it. <clears throat> so let's first uh, explain these names. Elijah. Uh, it's... Uh, if you break it down, L is God, L-E is my God, and Yah is Yahweh. So my God is Yahweh. And Elisha is God, L-E, my. Sha comes from the word Yasha, which means to be saved. So this one, when you break it down, is my God is salvation. So Elijah and Elisha both picture Christ. It says, now the sons of the prophets. Now, these sons of the prophets were not really physical sons. They were disciples of the prophets. And they were in contrast to the sons of Baal at Bethel, where Elijah left and where Elisha is now leaving and coming down to this Jericho area. And they were going to build a bigger place for all of these people down here. Uh, so they can study with Elijah, I mean Elisha, the prophet. And, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> I call this prophet university. You know, you, you got KU, uh, Kansas University, you got MU, Missouri University, you got NU, you got OU, and here we have PU, prophet university. So, uh, you know, maybe I should call it Elisha U. <laughs> Anyway, I'll just throw that in for free, something to laugh at, and I won't charge you a dime on that one, okay? All right, so look at this pick here, and look at all that's going on here in this pick. I took this at a uh, trip that I took to Israel, and I did not know how uh, I would be using this pick and all kinds of video and footages and stuff like this. There was a lot that went on here. You know, this is the mountain where Moses died, Mount Nebo. I'm taking a picture on top of it, looking down into this uh, area. On this side right below us is Acacia Grove, and Acacia Grove means thorns, and they eventually crossed over and uh, made it over to Gilgal. Gilgal means a heap, and a uh, heap of stones, and that's what happened to the waters. They heaped up. Uh, and they crossed. So here you have a picture of the Israelites uh, leaving the place of thorns, Acacia Grove, and going over to into the kingdom. And this is when the mana stopped. And they were going to take Jericho. Well, this is where all this stuff happened right here. You have Jericho. You've got where the waters uh, parted. You have uh, John the Baptist was baptizing here. So... There was a lot that happened in this picture, and uh, this has happened in this picture. This is where Elijah went up on the chariot, right here in this picture. So, the Jordan means descender, and that's the river that runs through here, right up the middle of this valley. 
and it goes from Mount Hermon. It runs down, it fills the Sea of Galilee, and then it overflows and runs down into this Jordan River, and then it ends up in the Dead Sea. I think there's a symbolic picture there. Okay, the Jordan, which means the sender, is a picture of Christ. Christ is the one that descended from heaven. And I think it's ironic also that in the Book of Enoch, the Book of Jubilees, uh, it's stated that they believe this is where Mount uh, Heaven was, up on Mount Hermon. Uh, we know that's not true, but I mean, that's just what they kind of had in their, their mind, and it really fits this picture. So that's why I'm bringing this in. Okay, if you remember that Isaac gives both Jacob and Esau blessings using the phrase, the dew from heaven. And that reminds me of a psalm that David used using the word dew uh, about the dew of Hermon. And uh, this says in Psalms 133, 1 through 3, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when your brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard and on the beard of Aaron running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. So, Jesus was also believed to be transformed on this mount, Mount Hermon. Jesus is the descender that the Jordan pictures coming from heaven to earth, okay? The Jordan is where Christ's baptism took place, and we just talked about Acacia Grove and Gilgal. Acacia Grove means thorns. Uh, they were leaving the place of thorns and coming into the kingdom. That's symbolic of what uh, we are now in. Uh, Adam brought thorns. Uh, because of his sin and Jesus came and bore our thorns and took them away and we now if you are saved uh, uh, are out of the wilderness you are uh, in the kingdom spiritually let's go to the second verse here in uh, second Kings and it says let us go to the Jordan and each of us get there a log and let us make a place for us to dwell there and he answered go so let me dissect these words. The word Jordan is descender, and let each of us, each is ish, which means man, get, and this word get means receive. There a echad, and it means one, log, korah, which is beam or roof. Let us make a place, which is a markom, which is a room, for us to dwell there. That's Yasha, and that means live or dwell. And he answered and said, go. So look at all of the understanding that's built into these words that uh, doesn't necessarily get translated over into the English. Let me read this with just those translations that I told you about in my translation, okay? It says, let us go to the descender and man receive one beam or roof or log and let us make a room for us to live or dwell and he answered go this also kind of reminds me of a verse in the back of my mind this is john 14 1 through 4 it says not let your hearts be troubled believe in god believe also in me in my father's house are many rooms if we're not so i would have told you that i go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself. And where I am, you may also be. And you know the way to where I am going. So, let me go ahead and uh, clean that verse up that I just translated even a little bit better. And I'll just give you my uh, modern translation that uh, I, I made personally. We need to come to the Jordan the descender, Jesus, and receive one righteous being, who is Jesus, for a covering to dwell in. So you can see how all these words are pointing to Jesus. And I don't think my translation's that bad. I, I, I think I've taken all the words that are coming out of this verse and explaining it uh, for what this is pointing to. 
So I want to let God's word stand the way it is and just let my translation be what it is. And if it's wrong, uh, uh, that's okay. God's word doesn't change. His is true. Mine may not be. Okay? Verse 3. Then one of them said, Be pleased to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. So this word cut down is gazar, and it means to cut off, destroy, divide, exclude, or decide. And this is used in Isaiah 53, 8. It says, by oppression and judgment, he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off, that word gazar, out of the land of the living, stricken for transgressions of my people. Now, we know who was cut off here. This is Jesus. He was cut off from the land of the living. And uh, trees in this verse that we just looked at is ha Asim. And these are uh, just like what Moses cut down a tree and threw it into the water. So that's why I'm saying these are tied. Uh, same type of pictures going on here. And they're basically kind of saying the same thing. Okay, verse 5. <clears throat> but as one was felling a log, his axe head fell into the water, and he cried out, Alas, my master, it is borrowed. Exodus 15, 5. It says, The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. This is talking about the Egyptians when they were chasing the Israelites, and this is them going down into the depths of the Red Sea. Uh, the Israelites went through the waters. This is kind of symbolic of baptism. And they came out on the other end. And as the uh, Egyptians were trying to come through, they were covered and sank to the bottom like a stone. Well, this axe head fell into the water and it sank just like the Egyptians did. Okay, this is in verse 5 that we just read. While he was felling a log, his axe head fell into the water. So he cried out, Alas, my master, it is borrowed. Why is he worried about a borrowed axe head? It is. Uh, and if it's borrowed, another thing that we can imply here is that he didn't have enough money on his own to buy one. Otherwise, he would have bought one. So iron was a cherished commodity uh, in Israel at this time. Uh, you did not have very many. Uh, the Philistines had a lot of iron. They made swords with it, and they were always harassing the uh, Israelites because of it. So whatever iron they did have was cherished, whether they had it in swords, or whether they had it in plowshares or axe heads or whatever. It uh, was something that you didn't want to lose. Okay, so for someone to let him borrow uh, an axe head, this expensive tool, if you will, there had to be trust given to that borrower that uh, he would return it in the same condition uh, that he took it in, that he would take care of it and return it. There is a law here that we should bring into play in Exodus 22, 14 and 15. It says, if a man borrows anything of his neighbor and it is injured or dies, the owner not being with it, he shall make full restitution. And if the owner was with it, he shall not make restitution. If it was hired, it came for a tiring fee. So here it's saying, if the guy borrows something, if anybody borrows anything, I mean, it's just a given today. If we borrow anything, we should return it in the same condition that it's in, that we got it in. And that's what's going on here. If you borrow something, uh, you need to return it and make full restitution of it. In Matthew 18, 23 to 35, it basically says that if you can't pay your debt, you'll be thrown into debtor's prison until it is paid. And this is a picture of hell. Psalms 37, 21 says, The wicked borrows but does not pay. Proverbs 22, 7 says, The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slaves to the lender. So if you borrow something, you are required to give it back, biblically. Okay, if it's lost or damaged, you owe the person. 
And if you can't pay for it, you go into debt, slavery. That's what was done in those days. And this wasn't the rip crack cracking slavery. This was debt slavery. And the maximum an Israelite can be in a, that position was uh, six years. He was released on the seventh. So don't think of slavery in the Bible as what most people think of today. It wasn't the same. This was like paying off your debt. You're in slavery uh to your credit card, to your bank for your house loan or your car loan, okay? You have to pay it off and you have to work it off by doing that. So anyway, let's dissect this word, these words in verse five, okay? If you go to Bible Hub, uh, this word as one is actually translated ha Echad, and it means the one. And this word mafil is actually uh, comes from the word nafal, and it means to fall. And this is a tree. The word tree is hakara, and it means rafter, or roof, be a tree. Okay, and the word for iron is ha barzel. And this is iron or implement, and it's the iron, by the way. There's a definite article there. And the iron fell. It means in the fall. Same word that we just used uh, up three words prior, and it means to fall. Okay, this is the same word that's used in Genesis 6 with the fallen ones, went into the daughters of men, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, this word just means fall, fallen ones. Okay, and into is L, and it can mean near, with, among, or to, and then ha maim is the water, O, my master, which is alas, my master, and that's Adonai, which is Lord, he cried out, uh, uh, they eat sock. And this is to shriek or proclaim. Vehu, and this is it. Uh, but it can also be translated in he. So I want to keep that in the back of our mind. Because I think a lot of times when you look at these words uh, and do these translations, you get more depth when you look at some of these other words that they could be. It was borrowed. Okay. Shaul. So this is means to demand, to inquire, or request. So, it reads, But as one was felling a log, his axe head fell into the water, and he cried out, Alas, master, it was borrowed. Okay, let me just read you the clunky word-for-word -word translation in this and show you what's really being said here. The one fallen, the roof or tree, the iron fall to the water, O oh my Lord, and proclaimed, and he was demanded. So, this reminds me of a verse in Luke 12, 48. It says, Everyone to whom much was given of him much will be required, and from him to whom they have trusted much, they will demand the more. That really kind of fits what we're talking about here with this axe head. So, trees are often symbolic of people in the Bible, okay? Israel is known as a tree, an olive tree. You have Tamar, which is a palm tree. Trees that are most likely being cut down here in the uh, Jericho uh, area around the Jordan are, are probably Tamar trees. They are uh, palm trees, and they are known for being righteous in the Bible, straight, strong and that's where the word tomorrow comes from that's her name palm tree she is righteous reuben said she is more righteous than i okay but jesus is the one who is even more righteous than that he is the true righteous one is he not okay he is the one being cut down by man each man cuts down his own tree in this story and the axe head comes off and it's buried in the jordan river and then he cries out, Oh, my Lord, is borrowed. He's now in debt. He realizes what awful state he's in. 
and he's crying out for help. Okay, our lives are borrowed, aren't they? Okay, well, let's tell you this in with John the Baptist. Uh, this is happening, I believe, in this same place. Okay, John the Baptist is known for uh, being one uh, as Elijah. They even asked him that. He said, no, Elijah went up on a chariot here. John is baptizing here. Okay, Matthew 3, 4 to 10, it says, Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around the Jordan were going out to him. And they were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, well, We have Abraham as our father, for I tell you, God is able to, from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid at the root of the trees, and every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. <clears throat> so John the Baptist is associated with being Elijah in this place. He ate locusts and honey, and I believe this symbolized judgment. Locusts always bring judgment, and God is telling people to repent or be judged. And honey is symbolic of God's word, and he devoured God's word. <clears throat> okay? He lived by God's word. He was baptizing in the J Jordan River. And the Jordan River means descender. Who's the one that descended from heaven? Jesus. This is symbolizing the death, burial, and resurrection to new life. That's what baptism symbolizes. And noon is life, okay? Remember Joshua, son of noon? That actually is translated Yeshua, son of life, okay? John is using this story of Elisha, a uh, picture of Jesus who took over after Elijah with a double portion. Okay, remember Elisha got the double portion? Well, Jesus is the second Adam who received the firstborn right and got the double portion, okay? Jesus took over after John the Baptist. And he said, I must decrease and he must increase. You know, John realized this and was willing to fade out of the way. He recognized that Jesus was the one everyone was looking for, the Messiah. The axe head being laid to the root of the trees, I believe John is pointing us to someone, okay? Who cuts the root of one tree, let alone many trees that they were doing down here in this area at this time to build their their uh, prophet university uh, who cuts a tree by the root uh, when you're cutting it down to make a roof uh, that's something you're not going to do you're not going to use the tree root to make your covering you would start with the log and they would use that as a main beam and put smaller logs on top and then thatch and whatever they use palm branches or whatever so He's showing us something here. He's showing us that Jesus is the root that is cut down. He's the root of the trees. Okay, Jesus is the root of Jesse, and that's there. And I believe John is making a double picture here. Whether I'm right or not about that, I don't know. I'll let you decide. But I believe one picture that he's trying to show us here is that a tree is dead if it's not connected to the root any longer. That's just logic, okay, that, that I'm bringing into this. Whether he's actually doing this or not, I'm, I'm logically saying if your tree is not connected to the root, it's dead. Well, the Pharisees were looked upon as righteous people. They were Tamar, righteous palm trees, if you will, of the society. They did not recognize Jesus as Messiah. So once you are separated from the root, Jesus, the tree is dead. And he could be saying that you're about to be cut down. I believe that there is even another picture here that, if you remember at the bitter waters of Mara, uh, Moses cut down a tree and threw it in the water that healed the water. This tree represented Jesus who was cut off and symbolically thrown into the water, the bitter waters of Mara, 
and it pictured the resurrection and the healing that Jesus provided. And if you want to know more about that, go back to the uh, video on this channel, The Bitter Waters of Mara, and you can see more specifically how that is tied, these two stories are tied together. Jesus was the true righteous one who was cut off by sinful man. Okay, sinful man is represented in this ax head that fell into the water. Okay, he can be restored if he would recognize his debt and cry out to the Lord. Okay, in the Bible, fire is judgment, but water brings life, and Jesus is our living water. And if you die in debt and you're buried in living water, Jesus, you cry out to him, you will be resurrected to life with your debt paid. You will be restored back to your original condition. Okay, our lives are borrowed. And if you die with unpaid debt, you will not be raised to life, but you're going to stand in judgment in fire and you'll be thrown into debtor's prison, which is hell. So, so let's go to verse six and seven. Then the man of God said, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, he cut off a stick and he threw it there and he made the iron float. And he said, take it up. So he reached out his hand and took it. So let's dissect these words here. Man of God actually should be translated man of the God. When you do that, that's pointing you to the God. Your focus is on the God, okay? He cut off a stick. Now, here we use the word cut off, and you got katsav for uh, this word, and it means cut off. And then you have a tree, and this tree is etz, and it's the same tree that Moses cut down, it's the same word. Okay, so you have one tree, et, not a plural, okay? This is showing you who's being cut down here, isn't it? By, by dissecting these words, okay? And when he cut that off and threw it in the water, it made the iron float. This word is suf, and it's used in the Red Sea when it covered the Egyptians. All right, Lamentations 3, 54, it says, the waters flowed suf over my head. I said, I am cut off. That word is gazar. So Jeremiah is using the same word about himself as being cut off as a tree was cut off and thrown into the water. This tree being cut down is Jesus being cut off. And Daniel 9.26 says that, you know, the Messiah will be cut off in 69 weeks and then he'll come back for the final week. And this also is being used as when Moses cut off the tree. So all of these are pointing to Jesus. Okay, and when the tree is thrown into the water, what happens? The axe head floats. This is a miracle, and the resurrection is a miracle. Every one of them, every resurrection that has ever happened is a miracle. You becoming born again and raising to new life is a miracle. Okay, verse 7, and he said, take it up. So he reached out his hand, and he took it. Okay, take it up is harem lock, and it means to lift up, to exalt, or raise, to take or receive. God restores, and he lifts up, and he exalts, doesn't he? Okay, and the last part of this verse, it says, so he reached out his hand and took it. This shows that the debtor reaching to receive the gift that was given. This is free will implied right here in these verses, okay? You have to receive the gift that's given to you, or you can't apply it to your account. In Deuteronomy 19, there is another axe head story, and this is about an axe head coming off of someone who's cutting down a tree and it killing someone unintentionally. Okay, what does he have to do? He has to run to the sanctuary city. Jesus is who this is picturing. Okay, this is what we need to do. When we have been tainted with Adam's sin because of inherited sin of Adam, we inherit death, don't we? We need to 
run to Jesus. We need to ask him to save us from our sins and he will do it. So let me throw this summary in here. Let me just summarize everything that we have been talking about here, okay? And then you go back and read the story and see how all this stuff fits. Elisha pictures Jesus. His name means, my God is salvation. The trees picture Tamar, the righteous, being cut down or cut off. Okay, who is that? And that's Jesus. The axe head pictures fallen man. And I think there's another little picture in here that when the axe head is separated from the wood, the tree, the cross, Jesus, he's now fallen and weighed down. But even if that little picture isn't in there, uh, this axe head shows that man is weighed down with sin and in debt, needing to be restored to his previous state that we had in the garden. The waters that cover man pictures death, him being buried, and because he has fallen, these same waters of the Jordan, the descender, uh, the water that and the dew that came from heaven, uh, that flows all the way from Mount Hermon down to the Dead Sea, this pictures Christ, the living water who descended from heaven. And Elisha, which is God of salvation, pictures the work of Christ. When he is cut off, he will pay the debt and restore the fallen. Elisha cutting the wood and throwing it into the water pictures Christ cutting the wood himself and being the means of restoration. He said, no one takes my life, but I lay it down. Jesus did this all himself. He is a gift paid for by God himself. Okay. And when we realize this hopeless state that we're in, we're in debt and we cry out, oh no, save me, Lord. The weight of sin is removed and we are raised to new life. We are restored. Okay, this is pictured in the baptism that John was doing in this very place. Okay, we have to pick it up ourselves. We have to reach out and receive our salvation. That's free will. And receive that gift that's already provided to us. Okay, it's free. But you have to apply it. Okay, this reminds me of how Revelation ends. In Revelation 20, 13 to 15, it says, And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, there's your fire, each one of them according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. You want to die and be buried in living water the Jordan, the descender, Jesus, who came from heaven. You don't want to be buried in fire and judgment. So realize the awful predicament that we are in. We've been tainted with Adam's sin. We have sinned ourselves. And we are in debt. And we can't pay it. But Jesus Christ came and shed his blood. He made the payment for us. And we need to cry out to Jesus to say, oh no, my life is borrowed. I have sinned. Save me. And we need to reach out and receive that free gift of life that he has given us through his blood on the cross, on the wood. He was cut down for us. And because he was cut down, we can be restored and raised to a new life. All we have to do is ask. Just ask him and he will give you salvation.